Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at area of compound shapes. So I've got a couple of examples today. So question 1a, well, question a is this, and then question b, we're going to look at um, this one here, how to find the area. So when we're actually working with um, compound shapes, uh, there's this, you know, there's quite a few ways which you can actually um, solve this question, uh, particularly with area. So what I'm going to be showing you guys is I'm going to show you two methods, and I'm sure there's other methods in here which people might be um, wary of. So I guess the first thing we really want to do is find those two missing sides. So what I'm talking about is this yellow side here. I want to know what the length of that is. And I also want to know what the blue length is. Now, in some cases, you might be like, well, do I really need it? Um, in this case, you could probably uh, get away with one of them, but also keeping in mind that sometimes they ask perimeter questions. So it's just good a good idea to kind of go um, how to figure them out when you do get asked how to find perimeter as well. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to find the first yellow length. So to work out the yellow length, I've got to take the green length, which is eight. So remember that the green length is eight, which is going from there, which means the yellow part is kind of matching up to this part here and finally we are going to add another color which is the two which is going to be orange so that's where the two is so you can kind of see that eight is actually the green part oh, i should have done this slightly different hang on let's actually put the eight here just there we go so eight is green highlighted yellow is what we're trying to figure out and the orange part is actually worth two. So straight away we can see that eight take away two is gonna be six, all right? So that yellow part there is actually six units long. Now we pretty much need to do the same thing for the blue part, right? So I'm gonna choose a different color here. So I'm gonna put this uh, pink colored part as six, and I'm gonna put the 10 as the red colored part here. So I'm hoping that you guys can see that the red part is actually the pink part, which is six, uh, plus whatever the blue part is going to be. So because the pink part is equal to six, uh, the blue part, we can kind of say that six plus four is 10. So that's how we know that this blue length is going to be four. All right, so once we got that, um, as I said to you, there's a couple of ways of doing this. We could split them up into uh, three rectangles, two rectangles. Um, so it's it's entirely up to you. All right. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we've got the shape here, right? So this is the shape we've got right now. I know this is just a rough sketch. So method one could be that you split this up into two tri uh, two rectangles. So that's rectangle one, rectangle two. Uh, another way you could do it is you could do something like this, where this is rectangle one, and this entire thing is rectangle two. Uh, or you could also do something like this, where you're splitting splitting them up into uh, almost like three rectangles. And I guess that's why having those um, information with the blue colored side length and the yellow side's length makes a massive difference. Okay, so let's try this method here first. So I'm gonna do this one here. So if I was to do that, I can see that my measurements, I'll actually write my measurements here. I've got eight and six, and my second one is going to be four and two. So basically I have two rectangles that I've got to add up, which is the big one, which is eight and six, plus uh, that one there, which tends to be two and four. So working out the area for that, I've got eight times six, which equals to 48, plus four times two, which equals to eight. And what I end up with is 56. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, I mean, as I said, the other way is you can take the missing rectangle away. So what do I mean by that? Um, I'm just gonna grab this entire shape here. So let's kind of go here. So the other way that you could do it is um, you could actually treat the big rectangle outside. So you could treat it like this, where at the moment the measurement is eight 
10, 6, 6, 4, 2. So what you could also do the other way is you could actually treat the outside as one big rectangle and the inside, this part here, is going to be another um, rectangle there. So basically what I'm saying is we take the green rectangle and we subtract the pink rectangle and we should also get the same answer. So if you look at it, the green rectangle is 8 and 10 and the pink rectangle is 6 and 4. So 10 times 8 minus 4 times 6 is going to give me 80, take away 24, which once again gives me 56. And if you guys remember, that's pretty much what we got in the, the other way of doing it as well. So a couple of ways of doing it, yeah? All right, so let's go to the next question. And this one, we're going to split them up. So we're going to split it up into a, a rectangle a rectangle and a triangle. I think in this case it ends up being a square, but that's all right. Uh, we need to find the height of this. Uh, so we need to figure out what this length is. We know what this length is, the blue length is, because that's equal to 6. So we're going to put 6 there, which means the yellow length is going to be 8, as 14 take away 6 is 8. And we also know the base of the triangle is going to be the same length as here, which is going to be 6. So what we really have is we have a square, which is 6 and 6, plus a triangle, which is 6 and 8. Uh, so we're going to work it out. So we've got base times height, which is 6 times 6, which equals to 36, plus uh, half times base times height. So remember that uh, finding area of a triangle is base times height. Uh, so we've got half times 8 times 6, which gives us 24. And then here we got 36 plus 24 equals to 60. Yeah, so I mean, this method is probably the easiest one. Uh, you could try creating a big rectangle and taking a triangle, but guess what? You'll still be doing the same kind of steps anyway. So in this case, there's not really much that you can do apart from this, um, kind of splitting them up into two different shapes and putting them together. So guys, that's basically what area of compound shapes are. Uh, there will be a follow-up to this one with circles, so keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, thank you for watching.